Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the C240 Duo AC-DC charger from HDRC. This charger is part of 4 new chargers that have been recently released by HDRC. The 150 models allows you to charge a single battery, whereas the Duo models allows you to charge two batteries simultaneously. The difference between the T and the C versions is that the T model features a touchscreen, whereas the C models are using just simple buttons. In this table you can find the specifications of all the models, so if you would like you can just pause the video and go over it. As you can see all the models support AC input voltage between 100 and 240 volts and DC input voltage between 11 to 18 volts. Inside the box we can find the C240 Duo charger, the user manual, two balance boards, ML XT60 connector to alligator clips which will allow you to power the charger using the XT60 female connector which is located over here and an AC cable. In addition we can also find two sets of these connectors. To the charger we are going to connect this banana plug to male T connector and one of these connectors is going to connect to it on the other end so we can find a female T connector on one side and on one side we can find alligator clamps, a Tamiya connector and also a male XC60 connector. The charger itself is pretty compact. Here you can see how it looks next to my daily chargers, the ISDT D2 and the Hobbymate D6 Duo Pro. The D6 Duo Pro is an AC-DC charger, however the ISDT D2 operates only on AC input. On the top side of the charger we can find two LCD screens and buttons that control each charger individually. So over here we can find charger number one and over here charger number two. On the front we can find on the left side the connectors for charger number one, so we can find these two banana female plugs a balance socket and a temperature control port. On the right side we can find the same connectors for charger number 2. On each side of the charger we can find fans and also PC link for upgrading the firmware of each charger individually and on the right side we can find a female XT60 plug and the walking voltage of the charger is between 11 to 18 volts. Unlike the Hobbymate D6 Duo Pro you won't be able to just plug your XT60 battery and power it up and in order to do so you will need to obtain a male XC60 to a male XC60 adapter. On the back side of the charger we can find the AC input plug and next to it this on and off switch which is very useful and I'm kind of missing on my other chargers so you can just leave it the AC input connected and power it on and off using the switch. After turning on the charger the fan kicks in and I was wrong before the fan is only located over here and this is just a ventilation hole. Navigating through the options is done using the minus and plus buttons, entering the option is done by using the enter button and going back is done by using the stop button. So on the main menu we can select the programs so we can charge lithium batteries, NIMH slash NICD batteries, PB, we can enter the user settings, access extra functions, and load memory. In this option we can navigate through 20 different presets and you can also configure it individually. So for example in program number one we can charge 2S type of batteries at 0.1 amperes. If you'd like you can also change the settings so let's change this setting for example. So let's change it for fast charging lipo batteries at 1 amperes and let's make it a 3S lipo battery. And now even if I'm going to go back and uh, after I turn it off, which you can see takes about 5 seconds and turning it on, you can see that if I'm going to go to load memory, this program was saved. So this is very convenient, so probably you're not charging many types of batteries, so you can preset a couple of options in this menu and whenever you're charging your batteries you can just use them. Inside the user settings we can change these options. So first of all you can turn on and off the key beep. So you can see now when I'm moving between the options you're not going to hear the beeping sound. You can also set the buzzer volume which is also going to affect the beeping sound. So you can set it to low. It sounds like that. You can set it to high and now you can hear it's a little bit louder. By default it is set to low and you can also turn it off. So now you can see we can't hear the beeping anymore. And it's also going to affect the completion sound when you finish charging the battery and also the sound when an error occurs. So I think that I'm going to keep it on low which is the default option but I'm going to turn off the key beep because it is kind of annoying. 
On the next screen, we can set the completion ring beep. You can turn it off, set it to one, two, three, four, or five minutes. And you can set it also to always, so it's going to bug you until you're going to come back to your charger and press the stop button. On the next screen, we can set the cycle waste time, which is applicable for NIMH and NICD batteries. It is not so relevant to me. Next, we can set the low input voltage cutoff. This is going to protect an external battery when the charger is being powered by the DC power. Next, we can set the external temperature cutoff. The default is 60 degrees and it is set to on. Of course, this is only going to work when a temperature sensor is going to be connected to one of the ports of the charger. Next, we can set the capacity cutoff. By default, it's set to on and 8000 mAh. So if it's going to pass this value, it's going to just stop the charging procedure. Next, we can set the safety timer. By default, it's set to on and 240 minutes. So after this amount of time is going to pass, the charger is going to shut down. You can set it anywhere between 10 to 720 minutes. Inside the extra function menu, we can find first of all meter for LIXX batteries. So you can just enter it, select the battery that you would like to test. So you can set it to LILO, LIFE, LIPO, and LIHV. Then just press enter. And you will need to long press the enter button, of course, when a battery is connected to the charger in order to see the battery status. You can also measure the internal resistance of the battery. So just plug a battery, press enter, and then it's going to work, of course, if a battery is connected. You can also perform balance for lithium batteries. So you can select the type of battery, then long press the enter button. And when a battery is connected, it is going to balance it through the balance port. And also a nice feature that hides inside this menu is the digital power. So you can power an external device using the banana plug connector. You can set the voltage output between 5 to 27 volts. And you can set the ampere output between 0.1 amperes all the way up to 10 amperes. Now I've got an 850 mAh 3S LiPo battery connected. So I'm going to charge it using the lithium battery program. So I can just enter it by pressing enter. And then I can change between the modes by hitting the plus and minus buttons. So you can switch between storage, discharge, balance charge, charge, and fast charge options. I'm going to charge it using the charge option. And after pressing enter, we can change the battery type. So we can change between LiPo, LIHV, LiLo, and Live batteries. This is the LiPo battery, so I'm going to set it to LiPo. And you can also change the current now between 0.1 amperes all the way up to 10 amperes. Since this is an 850 mAh LiPo battery, I'm going to charge it at 0.9 amperes, which is recommended. The charger is going to detect the cells automatically when the balance port is connected, but you can also change it here if you'd like. And then in order to start the charging procedure, you will have to long press the enter button, and then the charger is going to start charging after pressing confirm. Over here in this screen, we can see the battery that is being charged. So this is the 3S LiPo battery, the current, the voltage of the battery, the program, a timer, and after pressing plus, we can also see the voltage of each cell in millivolts. If you'd like to stop the charging procedure, you can simply press stop, and now the charging procedure was terminated. When the charger is powered through AC, the maximum output power for both channels combined is 150 watts, and just as a reminder, this is the multiplication of the voltage per ampere. So for example, if you're charging a three cells battery at 10 amperes, which is anyway the maximum output current per channel, then you're gonna have 30 watts left for the second channel. And when the charger is powered through DC, the maximum power per each channel is 120 watts, which makes it 240 watts combined for both channels. Now, as you can hear, the charger can get pretty loud. I think it's actually a bit louder than my other charger. You can hear it. And the fan is not going to kick in all the time. It's just going to kick in, I think, when the internal temperature is going to be over 45 degrees. And as you can hear, it can get pretty loud. So you have to take it into consideration. So overall, I think that the HDRC C240 Duo is a great option if you're looking for a Duo charger that is working both on AC and DC. I really like the on and off switch, which is not present on my other chargers, which might be a little bit more elegant. But again, in terms of price, I think that the C240 packs lots of features and provides an excellent value for money. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this charger, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. 
Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.